Hi, my name is Dennis, and in this very short video, I want to highlight uh, a couple of very important concepts of this article of the Unified Namespace by the United Manufacturing Hub on their website. It will be linked below the video. So essentially, a unified namespace is constructed from a couple of components. And one of the main components that we will highlight in more detail here is the event-driven architecture. And we will also explain the role of MQTT and MQTT brokers in this architecture. Now, what do I mean by this? Um, if we look at the past, we made point-to-point -point connections where we had to connect each individual component that produces and requires data. You can do this for a while, but as the number of components grows, the number of connections explodes exponentially. This system is simply not scalable. Now, the way a event-driven architecture solves this is by implementing an asynchronous message passing uh, data flow. Here we only have data producers and data consumers. We also call this architecture a PubSub or Publish Subscribe architecture, where you have certain nodes in a system that publish or produce data, and you have certain nodes that consume data, but they can also write it back. Now, how does this architecture make connections simpler? Well, in this case, the beauty of this system is that a data consumer or a data producer don't have to know about the other parties in this architecture. When you add a new consumer of a particular data flow, you can just add it and connect it to the central broker that stores all the information. This means that for every new component to your system, you just need one extra new connection to your message broker. Now, before I pass on to the discussion of message brokers and MQTT, I quickly want to highlight that an event-driven architecture is really not a system that was developed together with the unified namespace. It's much older. For instance, the popular professional social media platform LinkedIn developed Kafka and later open sourced it as their event-driven architecture that can process up to seven trillion messages per day. So this truly illustrates how scalable a pops up or an event driven architecture really can be. Now, returning to brokers, which are the central points that collect and forward messages between producers and data consumers, I mentioned MQTT. Essentially, MQTT is the protocol by which the messages are communicated. And it's a very popular protocol in manufacturing because of its light weightedness. By this, I mean that a message essentially doesn't have a lot of overhead. It's relatively small if you measure it in bytes. This makes it very applicable in situations where you have limited bandwidth, either because it's a very remote location, as certain plants are, or because you have a limited bandwidth with a huge amount of sensors, which can also take place on the shop floor. Now the MQTT, for this, you need a central component, which we call an MQT broker. And an MQT broker is, as I've explained earlier, the component that makes sure that messages are collected and can be read from by the various producers and consumers. Note that the message broker is not meant for long-term storage. We will get to this point in a future video. If you want to play around with MQTT brokers yourself, I can highly recommend the open source Eclipse Mosquito Broker, which is managed by the Eclipse Foundation. If your use case is really industrial and it's going to be used in production, you will be better served by a professional broker like HiveNQ, which, by the way, is already integrated in the UMH stack. That's all for this video. In the next video, we will focus on how the messages are organized in the topics, in the broker. But for now, I would really encourage you to read this article that details the various components of the unified namespace. It will be linked below the video. Thanks for watching.